Hi guys and welcome to this training session where I'm going to show you how you can use the Wiser Home app on your smartphone to control and set schedules on your Drayton Digistat over a local Bluetooth connection. So on the front of all of the new Digistats there is the Scan Me label and you can use the camera on your smartphone to scan the QR code and that will then open a browser which will take you to the section of the Drayton website dedicated to the new Digistat. And here there's lots of details about the new features and functionality, but as you get to the bottom of the page, there are the two buttons that take you to your respective app stores for iOS or Android. Now, if you don't want to use the QR code, you can just navigate to your app store, as I'm doing here, and then search for Wiser, and you will find there's an app called Wiser Heat, and this is where those buttons will bring you anyway from our website and then go through the motions of installing the Wiser Heat app onto your phone. So once the app is installed, launch it, and there's a couple of system messages that come up to start with. The first one is that Wiser Heat would like to connect to your local network, and you need to click OK on that. And the second one is that Wiser Heat would like to use Bluetooth. Now the Digistat connects via Bluetooth, so we also need to click OK on that. Once the system messages have been confirmed, you then need to click on the Get Started button and then click the Digistat option. And the first thing the phone does is a Bluetooth check to make sure that Bluetooth is active on your device. The app then prompts you to make sure that the Digistat itself is powered up. And if that's the case, you hit Next. And then you need to put the Digistat into pair mode, which is a long press on the fifth button, the circular button. Press the I've done these steps and then the app will start scanning to find the Digistat. You will then get a system message with a pairing request and you need to make sure that the numbers on the Digistat match that of the system message. Then press pair on the app but you also need to save the change on the Digistat by using the fifth button. Now sometimes you'll need to press the button twice because the first press activates the screen and brings on the backlight and then the second press confirms the change. The Digistat will now return to the home screen and there is now a Bluetooth symbol on the top edge of the screen. Back to the app and you now need to give your new Digistat a name, which is likely to be the room or zone where it's likely to spend most of its time. The system then performs a firmware check to make sure that your device is on the latest firmware and if it's not, it will then go through the process of upgrading. Now this is done by using your phone as a bridge between the Digistat, which is connected via Bluetooth, and our cloud service, so you will need a data connection, either Wi-Fi or mobile data, in order to receive the firmware upgrade. Remember, there is no direct connection between the Digistat and the internet, so it can't see the cloud service itself. It needs to have the phone in between when doing this. Once the update has been downloaded and applied, the Digistat will then reboot and you'll get the confirmation in the app that you're on the latest firmware. You now need to create an account and if you've ever installed Wiser, this will be very familiar to you. So enter your name, email address, the password that you want to use, select your country and also accept the terms and conditions. This will then send an email to the registered address that you then need to click through. If you notice a mistake with the email address, you can go back and correct it, or if you find that the email doesn't arrive, you can hit the resend button. Once in your emails, click on the confirm button, and it will tell you that your account is now verified, and you now need to go back to the Wiser app. Click the About My Home button, and proceed to enter your address details. Once complete, Hit the continue button, the details are saved, and you then get the confirmation that all of the registration process has been completed. Click done, and you're taken in to the main control screen. So now when you launch the app, you're taken to the home screen, and the Bluetooth connection is established automatically in much the same way as any other Bluetooth device, meaning you don't have to go through the pairing journey every time. The home screen shows the Digistat's set point and ambient temperature, and you can make a quick change by boosting using the right hand button. Here you can choose from 30 minutes to 3 hours, and it's a 2 degree boost which will last for that period. When a boost is active, the button glows orange, but you can press on it again to cancel the boost should you wish to, and then the button will go back to being white. 
If you click on the bar itself, it takes you into the control screen where you can make changes to the temperature using the slider. Now, if you're set to follow the schedule as we are here, any changes you make on this bar will last until the next time period in the schedule and then it will revert back to following the schedule. So this can be viewed as an advance. You can also access the boost menu from within this screen also. And if you want the set temperature of this boost to be anything other than the two degree increment, you can go in and change the temperature accordingly. Just make sure that the boost button is orange to ensure that boost is active. Now, the most effective way of using this control is to set up a schedule that more or less suits your lifestyle. And then if you need to make any ad hoc changes, you can do that using the boost or advance function. To access the schedules, click on the zone that takes you into the control screen. And then at the bottom, you've got the edit schedule button. And that takes you in to the schedule for that particular day. So here we're looking at Thursday and you can see there are four events throughout the day. And the principle here is that we are setting time and temperature events throughout the day. So when you want your heating to come on, you're going to set a temperature more or less around 20 degrees and then maybe 19 to 21 degrees. And then when you want your heating to go off, you can either choose a setback temperature as we've got here for 16 or you can choose to set your heating to go off, which is typically what you would do overnight. The schedule shown here is the default, so if all you do is install the Digistat and leave it in auto mode, this is the schedule that it will follow from Monday to Friday, and the temperatures and times are slightly different for Saturday and Sunday. To make a change, you click on the entry, and then you can roll the temperature up or down, depending on which direction you want to go in, and the same principle with the time, roll the hours up and down and the minutes, and then once completed, hit the set button, and that will then lock in the change. Do this for every entry until you've shaped a schedule that suits your lifestyle. So the default is to have four time and temperature events for each day, but you can add an event should you wish to. So click on the add button at the bottom and then define the event. Again, just picking a temperature at a particular time and you'll see that that then gets added to the rest of the schedule and you can have a maximum of eight events per day. Should you wish to, you can also remove events by clicking on them and hitting the delete button. Once you have a schedule that you're happy with, you can then go through and choose which days it applies to. So the select all days at the top means that it's operating as a 24 hour control, or you can start to deselect and this gives you seven day control. To check the changes that you've made, you can tap through each day of the week and you can see here I've got Monday to Friday the same and Saturday and Sunday different. So this would be considered five day, two day control. Now let's take a look at the automation page, which is the tab in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. From here, I can define the away mode profile. So I set the temperature that I want away mode to apply to the zone. And then once that's saved, I've then got the toggle that I'm able to activate away mode. So if I was to leave the house, I would toggle away mode on. And in doing so, that would apply the eight degrees across that zone. And then when I return, turn away mode off. And you can see that the zone goes back to following the schedule as it was before. For users with the RF902 pack, the two channel, you also get the extra zone shown on the home screen and you've got the same controls. You've got the boost controls from the home screen and you can also edit your schedules in exactly the same way as you did with the central heating zone. But now you're simply setting on and off times and it's the cylinder stat that is controlling the temperature of the hot water. Again, you have seven day programmability by using the copy days button and you can choose which day that that profile applies to. We'll now have a look at the system settings by clicking on the icon in the top left hand corner. And then once in there, if you click on the devices page, it shows you the Digistat and the battery health uh, of the device connected to your system. And clicking through further gives you more details, such as the firmware revision that the Digistat is running. But you've also got the option to rename the device as well as remove it from the system. Now you see at the bottom, there is a tab called Smart Modes, and there are options here for delayed start, which can delay the start time of your heating using the learnt characteristics of the thermal profile, as well as weather data based on the postcode you used when you registered your account. 
We also have Optimum Star as an option, which ensures that the set temperature is achieved by the time that you require it. And using intelligent modes such as these can save in excess of 10% on heating fuel. So that's how we control the new Digistat using the Wiser app over a Bluetooth connection. Next we'll look at how we make the exact same changes but on the front of the Digistat itself. So when in auto mode, which is when the control will follow the set schedule and is indicated by the little calendar symbol on the bottom of the screen, any changes that you make by using the plus or minus buttons will appear as an advance. That means that whatever temperature you set and you lock in, it will stay like that until the next timed event in the schedule, and then it will go back and revert to following the set times. Once you've made your temperature selection, you save it by pressing the circular button. A very useful feature for those with impaired vision is the fact that you get an audible alert when your set point crosses the ambient temperature. So if you cross in the upward direction, then you get a high beep. And when you cross the ambient temperature when setting a lower temperature, you get a low beep. To access the boost menu, you press the circular button and that first brings you up with your timing. So you can choose 30 minutes up to three hours. Lock that in again with the circular button and then use the plus or minus to change and set the temperature you require. Save it with the circular button. And if you're calling for heat, you will have a flame symbol displayed on screen. You also have the ability to modify the schedule as I showed you in the last session. To make system changes, you need to access the settings, which is a three second press on the cog button. And then once you're in there, you can choose between the different modes. So auto is following the schedule. If we change that to manual and confirm the change, now whatever temperature we set on the thermostat will persist until we make a subsequent change and is indicated by a hand symbol on the bottom of the screen. You can also choose to set the control to off, should you wish to, from within this menu. Setting the timed away mode or holiday mode is also done from within this menu. You do this by firstly setting the time that you want away mode to be active from. So pick your year, your month and your day and even your time. And then once you've saved that, you then do exactly the same for the end period. So set it for how long you're going to be away. Confirm it with the circular button. And you get the little save symbol on the top of the screen to indicate that the settings have been changed. There are also a number of advanced user options, such as being able to change the time format, the date, the current time, enabling daylight saving mode, and temperature offsetting, to mention just a few. When using the RF902 pack configured for heating and hot water, you get to toggle between the two using the settings button. Click it once and then use the plus or minus to choose either heating or hot water and save the change with the circular button. Any subsequent changes you make then will be with respect to what the symbol is on screen. Here I'm making changes to the hot water. I can now change back to the central heating and then the advance and boost menus are with respect to central heating. This goes for setting the schedules as well. Firstly pick the function that you want to schedule and then enter the schedule menu using the calendar button on the right hand side. Now if there is a call for hot water, you get the little water droplet symbol, and if there's a call for both, you get both. Thanks for watching this training video, and if you need any more information or resources, head over to our website, DraytonControls.co.uk.